All right, we're live. <laughs> hey guys, I'm uh, super excited today. I have Elizabeth Fraser with me. Now Elizabeth has a really cool story um, and, and it's, it's, it's been a journey and it's exci I'm excited to hear her go through this process and tell you kind of what she's discovered about not only herself, but through the mental, the, like the mind's ability to kind of work through a pain and work through difficulties. And um, for those that don't know, so Elizabeth was a victim of sexual trafficking um how many years were you were you in it um not that it almost really almost affects. yeah almost 30 years wow yeah so elizabeth has obviously dealt with a lot of different things that come from that there's the whether it's the emotional pain the different things you you fight would just imagine you fight with mentally with self-worth and stuff like that mm -hmm. um but with that she's been able to build a thriving business in hero bands and this is my favorite part of the story because she actually works with hero bands. They built, I don't have one. Shoot. Do you have one on? Of course. Of I course. And there's, yeah. they're awesome. So they, they all have, how many different words do you have now? Oh, you, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, you can customize it to anything. I have like so the, 15 to choose from and then you can pick your own. Yeah. That's awesome. So what they do is they actually, you can, you can purchase these bands for yourself but you can also purchase them to give to a victim of uh, sex trafficking. And, and she works in conjunction with Operation Underground Railroad and Tim Ballard's crew over there. And um, they actually work to rescue a lot of kids from sex trafficking. And so if you're, if you're by one of these bands, if you donated the kids, then all the kids that they rescue, they get these bands. And what are some of the words they say? I'll let you say it because I'll, I'll forget a bunch, but. Yeah, well, I talked to the, the director of aftercare at OUR. Her name is Jess Mast. And she mm -hmm. helps me pick the words pretty much every month for these kids because she's in there with them day in and day out. So we've done words like strong and brave and um, I am because they're really working on I am statements. I am yeah. this, I am that, you know. Um, That's them learning to believe about who they are again, not versus who they are. Yep. Right. And things they like and things, you know, they just, they lose their whole self. So when I make them, I actually am working on some right now. Um, let's see, I have some I'm going to send. This one says brave. And I don't think you can see it very well, but right down here, I put That's initials awesome. of the person that bought it. So when oh, these kids so get cool. them, they see, oh, this, this is the person, the tangible person that bought this for me. And they don't have many things of their own when they're rescued. So it's not they like it's just generic gift then. It's like no. to them, it's like, this is a person who cares yep. enough about me that yep. bought this to give it to me. Yep. Because I am important for no other That's reason so than awesome. existing. They didn't have to do anything to get it. So it's my favorite part of the job too. That I makes me it. important. That's so cool. Yep. Um, so yep. now you've also been able to go with OUR, haven't you? I did. I went on an aftercare mission to South America. Now, what yeah. was that like? Oh my gosh. It was. I, mean, I would imagine that was very emotional too. A lot of the things that it brought up inside of you that you're like, okay, I've dealt with all this. And then you get and you're kind of like. Yeah. This is. You know, I, I was expecting it to be harder when I was there. It really hit me when I got back. When I was there, I think just God or, you know, some higher power just helped me plow through it and be super present for these kids and love them and just soak it all in because it's the most awful thing, but they are happy, you know, they are playing and they're in these little homes where they feel like they have a family with all these kids that have been through similar things. So it's, I, I really realized that I take for granted how I still struggle so much. I'm like, these kids are thriving and they're doing well because of OUR and because of these aftercare homes that are taking care of them. And it hit me when I got home, how, how I, when I was looking through, through some pictures and things like I didn't realize how messed up it was and how, you know, I could see myself in those kids faces. You know, I didn't realize yeah. how cool I was until I was there thinking, these kids are so little. And then in my head, I'm like, I was that little. How could people do that, you know? And not realizing to me, because I always felt like I was a grown up, because I was always doing grown up things. So it really hit me wow. how, how awful it is and how little these kids are. Now, how, 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 young, how young were you when that, the whole, I, I don't know how to, if it's the right phrase to say we're sucked yeah, in. Know, I'm not sucked in, but you know what I mean. 
My earliest memory, I was about four. Um, oh my gosh. And, and I said 30 years, but it wasn't 30 years. It was, it was mid 20 years because okay. I moved um, and cut every unsafe person off. Uh, let's see about 11, almost 11 years ago, about 11 years ago. So, you, so yeah. about 20 some odd years then. Yeah. So yeah, 20 some odd years. So yeah. Wow. Now what was, so when you finally, well, let me ask this one thing. This is for someone who may watch this, who is in it by themselves. I don't want to miss this one point. Mm. Well, actually I'm asked two points on this. And, and um, the, the first is if, if you're, what is the sign some of us can actually look for on the outside? If we're seeing, are there, are there specific things you can see or that we that you should look for to be wondering if someone is dealing with this kind of thing? Because most people I'm assuming that are involved in sex trafficking aren't going to come out and say, Hey, I'm involved in sex, sex trafficking. Someone help me. Oh, yeah. They've been most have been threatened with their lives and it's really scary. And some of them might not even know that's exactly what's happening or they've been kind of tricked into it in a, in a sneaky way that they don't realize that's what's going on. Um, OUR actually put out a great training video for okay. people short. It's just a few minutes long, but what to look for, um, what to do. There's some hotline numbers that you can call. Uh -huh. We'll, we'll get together and we'll grab that video and yeah. we'll put it in the comments, the link to that video in the comments um, after this for sure. Yeah. It's, it's like five minutes long or so, and it's really helpful okay. for, so yeah, I would just direct you to them. Perfect. So what, so now what was your process like when you were finally were like, I don't know if it became aware. And then when you got out, what, how did you get out for someone who may be finally like their kind of their eyes are opening like, Whoa, I don't want to be in this anymore. Yeah. Um, I moved far away from my abusers and my, my pimps, my traffickers. So it was, it was a time I felt safe enough to be able to break off. Um, I wrote a letter to them because I was too afraid to confront them face to face at the time. And I told them I would contact the police if they tried to contact me or showed up or anything like that. So for the most part, they've actually respected that. I think they know that I was serious. Um, when you take that drastic of an action and move that far away and yeah. they know and that I, you're not playing games. Right. And I sent that letter to a lot of people, not just my abusers. And I wrote down who got a copy of that letter. So they knew exactly who had it. So if, if something did happen or I did end up missing or, you know, something happened to my son or my husband that people would kind of know where to start looking because there I were would, enough people to track the paper trail and say yeah. the, this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But okay. It was so, so scary. So, so that I imagine like coming out of that. And at the time you had, it was, you were married with one kid? Yeah, I was pregnant with my second. Yep. Okay. So how do you start to go through the process? And and, and the reason I want to discuss this, and a lot of people are like, oh, this is more of a, a business or personal self-help, like mm -hmm. mostly what I do in the lives. Mm -hmm. But I really want to talk about this because a lot of people, maybe they, don't, they haven't dealt with sex trafficking, but everybody has their own baggage they work through. Mm -hmm. We all have our own emotional damage that we've had, whether it's from a kid, whether it's from a significant other, whatever it should be. How did yeah. you start to work through... Um, the kind of the emotional trauma and everything that you had dealt with and re begin to rebuild your own identity. Well, you kind of touched on it. And I think, you know, I've, I've spoken at a decent amount of events and what I focus on is the hope because like you said, we all go through things like nobody is, you know, shielded. Right. From that. Nobody's immune to it. Right. Nobody's immune to that. And we all feel the same feelings, regardless of how they came about. So we all know what shame feels like. We know what feeling weak and mis, you know, understood and mistreated, sad. not yeah. feeling, having self value, yeah. self worth, depression, anxiety, addiction. Like we all have stuff, right? And for me, I did a lot of therapy, and it helped a lot. I had to do that for years and years, and it helped a lot. But um, I think my once I got to a point where I could manage a little bit, I started realizing how important positive words were and did a little bit of research. And there's plants. If you have two plants and you put them in the same, you know, same sun, same general living condition. Right. And you talk kindly to one and you talk negatively to the other. The, the negative one will actually die. It will physically wilt. And the other one will flourish. And so I realized I was 
doing so much negative self-talk mm -hmm. that I, I was wilting. I wasn't able to get to the next step that I needed to for my okay. healing. Wow. And um, pretty quickly after that, I, I love going to craft fairs and, um, you know, antique shops, random yeah. places to find find cool things. And I, I came across this lady that made some bracelets that had some words on them. And they were strong and peace and courage and calm. And I'm like, ooh, this will help remind me to be positive with myself and to get through, you know, whatever demons are in my mind. Right. So I bought a few and I would sit and rub these words. And my kids were in school at this point, at least my oldest was in school. And I would just rub it and it would say, you know, strong. And I'm like, okay, I don't feel strong. I want to feel strong, but I'm not feeling it yet. So I'm just going to rub this word and totally, and it, you know, and I started feeling all the things I was wearing. And I, I ended up collecting so many that my husband bought me my own tools because he's like, you have a problem. He's like, we need to save some money on this. You yeah. can start making them. Yeah. <laughs> and I needed so many different words for different situations. So I have probably 30 in my room just on these little you know, vases and I look at them and I pick, okay, I'm like, what do I have going on today? Today I know I have this Facebook Live, which I've never done before. So I was really intimidated. And <laughs> so I'm looking through my words and I pick what I feel like will help me, you know? And honestly, as I'm doing the interview, I'm sitting here holding it and rubbing it because they still give me power. Yeah. So that's kind of how, how the words kind of fell into it. Well, that's really cool. So it actually, the words actually stemmed from, it's not just like, okay, I want to help these kids feel secure. It really came from you being able to say, this is where I, this is kind of the the, the, the process that was able to help me kind of get over the hurdle, if you will. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting that um, I have a little bit of almost like borderline ADD sometimes. And um, my daughters are both um, special needs. They're both autistic. Mm -hmm. And um, both, I, I've done that and my kids have done it. Like sometimes <laughs> my wife should get sometimes annoyed with me a little bit because I'll be fidgeting with stuff uh -huh. and I'm like yeah. this. So I totally get the aspect of it's almost like uh, having that, that calming, like the, it's, it's like a self-talk, but it's like a quiet self-talk because it's you know, subconsciously. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that's such a cool thing. Um, and what, what do you, what's it like when you see the kids put them on? Oh my gosh. I don't think there are words for that. I was mailing them to OUR every month and that enough, that was enough for me. Like I knew how much these helped me. And so sending them, I'm like, these are going to help these kids. I know it. And then right. I get emails from Jess or texts or voice memos about where she was and how much these were helping the kids. So I had it in my mind what it was like, but being there and actually putting them on mm -hmm. what well, you can see, let's see wrong way. This picture right here, that, yeah is in South America of a oh. rescue child making her own hero band. That's so cool. So the older kids, I got to teach how to make their own. And I, and then it's even more personal because it's, oh. they chose, cause they choose a word that makes sense to them and that, yep. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Took a little baggie with everybody's initials that had purchased one and they draw one out. And those are the initials they got to put on their band. So I, and then putting them on the little kids, I, I, I cried every night in my hotel room just with gratitude, being able to look at these kids and say, I know what you are going through and life is, can still be wonderful. You know, it was, yeah. it was so painful to see them have to go through what they did, but so great for me to be able to look them in the eye and tell them that it's going to be okay. I know, I know from personal experience, it's going right. to be okay. So, and yeah. and the thing about that I love about what OUR does is that they get they they're saving these kids, and you see because I, I follow I, I literally watch everything Tim puts on mm -hmm. and OUR puts on Instagram all yeah. the little videos everything, yeah. and you see these kids and they're just it's amazing to me they're just so happy like yeah. I, I don't under yeah. it's so hard to comprehend how you can come out of like what we would look at as such a just I mean there's no like it's just a brutal situation and then the moment they get there the kids are like from what i'm seeing in the videos they're they're open for hugs and they're just open for love yeah. and they're not closed off it's just yes yeah this is an emotional thing I, I i love it it's yeah 
It's, it's really awesome. Um, There's a few that are closed off at first. They have to learn how to trust, you know, but after they get to know the people that are taking care of them and know that they're safe, they really get to be kids, which they've been denied their whole life. So yeah. Oh, that's you're so awesome. Work. Yeah. So I would imagine that this is an ongoing thing mm -hmm. that, so like when you're dealing with working through like, you know, whatever the trauma should be, mm -hmm. um, do you have different things? Cause you know, I know like you mentioned anxiety as people right now, and, and especially with mental health being pushed to the forefront as it is, whether it be sports yeah. and business, et cetera, anxiety is a big one that's coming out a lot. So I would imagine that that's mm -hmm. something that from time to time, are there things that trigger your anxiety that cause it to pop up and kind of, what do you do to counteract those trigger moments? I guess, if you will. Yeah. I still get triggered often. Um, it is not something I probably will ever be rid of completely, which is, I hate to say it, but it's probably good for me because I need to stay connected to it because it was such a big part of my life and I can do more good in the world if I remember um, how hard that was. You know, I don't want yeah. to get callous to it. So yeah, I still do. I still have really horrible nightmares. I can be walking down the street and a stop sign triggers me because that was somewhere I had to wait to be picked up or things like that. So when that happens, I, I just try to picture myself full of light, just kind of shooting light out because I feel like I can, it's kind of like my husband was joking with me the other day. It's kind of like Iron Man where he just shoots light out of his hands, you know? Yeah. And so I'm a very visual person. So I have to like shoot. Oh my. <laughs> I'm like, nope, we're not going there. You know, kind of a That's cool. funny thing, but that helps. Or I just, I get grounded by my, my bracelets. I really do just like, okay, I'm, that is not where I am now. I am very safe. A lot of the self-talk that feels kind of mm -hmm. silly as you do it, but once you do it more, it feels less silly. Um, well, it, it's no different than, than, you know, when athletes do visual visualization rituals, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I know the word ritual sounds kind of funny, but when they do the visualization activities and the athletes are going through and they, uh, they, w w you know, you hear Michael Jordan say he'd visualize making a, making a shot as the fourth quarter runs down. He'd yeah. done it in his head a thousand times. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've heard LeBron say similar things. Kobe's talked about it, how he's yeah. visualized hitting game winning shots, you know, time and time again. And then when the moment happens, you kind of just flow through it. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's a similar thing where you can just, the self-talk functions almost as a, I'm visualizing myself in a confident position, in a brave position, in a secure position. And, and eventually your mind, which is amazing what our minds can do, how they yeah. begin to like almost heal you, if you will. And I'm not, I don't mean that from like a metaphysical thing. I mean, I was, sure. um, I, I don't shy away from the religion side. I mean, I was born and raised in church and that's where my foundation, everything is. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not trying to go all like crazy, like mystical, but like the way the Lord created our brains, it's like your brains have the ability to change, almost change reality and change perspective when right. you use that, you know, the Bible talks about power of the tongue and, you mm -hmm. know, but, um, okay. So to the bands, uh, so how do people get involved? Um, I know you sell, so you sell them for people to personally buy, but also yep. how do they get involved in buying them, whether they buy one or they want to buy, if someone wants to come in and buy a bulk of them to mm -hmm. donate, how do they do that? Well, the donated bands I make at, um, at cost. So those you just get through the website, no matter how many you want to get, they're $10 and my website is herobands.com. Okay. And if you buy a band for yourself, I also um, started doing keychains because some people don't like having it on their wrist. So I have, that's cool. I've got keychains as well that they can do the similar thing. That's a good idea. But every item I sell, I also donate $2 to operation underground railroad. So no matter what you purchase on my site, you are helping the cause helping these kids. Um, so that's one way you can help. Another way is to donate directly to OUR. Um, you can become a volunteer for OUR and there's volunteer groups all over the country and they need help running booths or doing runs or, you know, things like that. Watching that training yeah. is huge so that you know what to look for and who to contact. But for me, when I'm asked this question, I think the biggest thing you can do, and this is going to sound silly and easy, which is good that it's easy, but 
just be a safe place for people because I had those people in my life and they didn't know what was going on in my life, but I felt safe with them. And that mm. more than once saved my life because I felt like I could keep going because there was somebody that cared about me. And that's why yeah. I named it Hero Bands was after those people because they were my heroes growing up. You know, they were just normal everyday people, most of them. But I feel like if you can be a safe place for kids, you're saving lives. So to me, it's as simple as being a safe place for, for people to be and feel genuine, unconditional love, no judgment, just love. You know what? Normally I try to wrap it up with something creative or whatever. I don't have anything to top that. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, where, where do they follow you? Let them know how to find you in Hero Bands, on yeah. uh, whether it be social media, et cetera. Sure. Um, my social media, my Instagram is hero underscore bands. And my Facebook is just hero bands. And my website is herobands.com. And I'm actually working on putting together a blog full of stories and things. I saw that. Yeah. If anybody's bought something, I would love a short story about how it's helped you or them or something. Because I want to grow as a community in raising each other up. And so that's so cool. Anything, I would really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I, I, this was, this was great. Really, I, I, we're definitely going to post the link to the uh, training that OUR has, and oh, obviously we'll post links to your okay. social and stuff as well. And thanks so much for coming on. And I love, love, love what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. And um, thank thanks. you for sharing your story too, because it, I think okay. your story, the okay. more you continue to share, will help a lot of people. Hope so. That's why I do it. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed and got a lot of value of this video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below. I'm going to be answering all the comments myself. And also, come find me on your favorite social media platform and tell me what else I can help you with.